Well, more than 70 church leaders from around the world are issuing a warning to bishops in Germany. In an open letter, they say proposed reforms under the country's synodal path may lead to schism. Last February, a German assembly drafted challenges to church teaching on homosexuality and the celibate all-male priesthood. And joining us now is Archbishop Salvador Corrivioni, head of the Archdiocese of San Francisco. Your Excellency, welcome back. Thank you. Good to we, be back with you. We want to talk to you about the letter, but first, uh, for those who may not be familiar, can you explain what the German Citadel Path is? The German, German Synodal Path is a multi-year process of, of talks and proposals um, with uh, bishops, uh, other clergy, and laity about uh, what they call reforms of the church, which are actually challenges to long established and settled doctrine and also disciplinary matters that you touch upon at the beginning of the program. Let's talk more about the letter now and why the bishops feel that it's necessary. Why did you sign it? I signed it because uh, the uh, German synodal path is sowing a lot of seeds of confusion uh, about what the church really teaches and, uh, as I said, what its long-established discipline is. And uh, it's certainly causing a lot of confusion within Germany. It stands to risk uh, spreading throughout the rest of the church. So I thought it was important that bishops around the world speak with one voice to be very clear about um, our fidelity to our, the deposit of faith, Christ entrusted to the apostles and through them to the whole church, especially their successors, we the bishops. We made a pledge to be faithful to uh, teaching the teaching of Christ, and uh, I join with so many other my brother bishops in doing so. Amen to that. And what do you hope that you'll achieve as a result of this letter? I've been hearing from some people in my own archdiocese uh, who are confused over this and also through contacts I have with the church in Germany. I've heard pleas from the faithful German Catholics there and a few bishops who still are trying to hold fast to the church's teaching about pleas for help. Um, and I, I understand that uh, when they see international uh, sort of opposition to what's going on there, that they, they feel a great support. And so I'm first, I'm first of all trying to support the faithful Catholics in Germany. This is in line with other such efforts. Uh, the president of the Polish Bishops' Conference sent a letter to the Bishops' Conference of Germany about this. The uh, Conference of the Nordic Bishops in the Scandinavian countries also sent a letter. So this is uh, along uh, the same line. So that uh, people can see that bishops around the world are, are not uh, in agreement with what is happening there. I, so I, I hope as well then, in addition to supporting the Catholics in Germany, faithful Catholics in Germany, and uh, teaching clearly for my own people here, my own archdiocese, that would also make clear to Catholics throughout the world that uh, their bishops are still standing with, with uh, the teaching that Christ has entrusted to the apostles and through them down to our own time to us. And it's important to note that this isn't the first time that many of the bishops' actions in Germany have been called into question, correct? Uh, yes, but it's certainly the most um, so egregious, I would say, example of that. And I, I might also add, this is also this action of the bishops with this uh, fraternal open letter, certainly in keeping with the division of the Second Vatican Council, which in both its uh, Christus Dominus and the, the dogmatic constitution on the church, Lumen Gentium, speak about how the, all every bishop, uh, he's the vicar of Christ for his diocese, but he also is to be have a concern in union with his other bishops for the good of the church throughout the world. And as Christus Dominus says, especially those parts of the world where, where the faithful are in danger of departing from the precepts of the Christian life or of even losing the faith itself. So uh, this action, our joint action of bishops from around the world issuing this letter of uh, fraternal correction is it, certainly in keeping with this teaching that we've received from the Second Vatican Council. You know, one of the big issues right now is, is the church keeping a balance, evolving with modern day situations and challenges, but still holding up to the values and teachings in the scripture, correct? Yes, of course. And the teaching of Christ is timeless. It's not, uh, it's not bound by any one generation, any one time or culture. It's, it's universal, it applies to all, all times, all places, 
all cultures. So uh, we, I think it helps us, what the re teaching we receive from Christ helps us to uh, have a well-formed conscious to critique what's happening in, at any time and in any culture, to recognize what is good or what is potentially good, needs to be corrected and approved upon what is wrong, and needs to be uh, rejected. And uh, so it gives us that wisdom to be, rather than swept away by the, you know, the spirit of the times and whatever the latest, uh, uh, whatever the latest trend is, it helps us to uh, see beyond that uh, with this deep wisdom of Christ. We also have, um, in, in, in proclaiming these teachings, you know, the church, we also a need to uh, to refer to science in so many different ways. Our, uh, God, God is the great artist, right? He designed the world. He designed it in a consistent way. Faith and science are not in contradiction with each other. What we know from faith, what we know from science certainly cohere. So we can certainly point to science, both the, the, the uh, hard sciences and the social sciences, behavioral sciences, that certainly back up what we already know from faith. Archbishop Gota Leone, thank you so much for your time. I, I always learn something every time I talk with you. You're welcome, pleasure to be with you.